Welcome to This Week in Sonar. I'm Craig Fuller, back from a long month hiatus. I was traveling, talking to folks about what's happened in the market, and frankly, all the excitement around Sonar. Yeah, we've had we've had a lot of activity over the last several weeks in Sonar. Yeah, uh, we've added a lot of new granularities to things that we had. We're really starting to distill our data yeah. into things that are usable and actionable. Well, I think it's it's we're taking it in and mm -hmm. looking at user specific experiences exactly. and really saying this is no longer just about the market, but it's how do you make each job function inside the organization more prescriptive on how they're actually interacting with the data. Yeah, you're solving an action, because every, everybody has these problems that they encounter on a daily basis, and you need to figure out a way to quickly solve that issue. Yeah, so I've been thinking about uh, how we define sonar, and it's really benchmarking. We have benchmarking of comparing and contrasting against your competitors mm -hmm. and, and the market. It's analytics and doing analytics about what's happening. It's monitoring of all the activity, whether it's news, whether just market data and forecasting. And that's a really important part of where we're headed is all the forecasted elements inside of Sonar. Yes, yeah, specifically our rate predictor uh, has had a big forecasting element to it. We forecast all of the information that goes into that. It's not just one thing that we're forecasting. I think this is an important fact, Zach, is that if you're only using historical data, it doesn't actually tell you much about what's happening. I mean, the, the freight market is not closed loop. Things like the coronavirus that we're seeing has a significant, I mean, you think about it, airlines are cutting air capacity. The Chinese economy, one of the drivers of manufacturing is basically in a, stand, will be in a standstill after the, right. the holiday. It's going to have a dramatic impact on supply chains. And we saw this last year with trade policy having a dramatic impact on Huge freight impact. demand. The, the problem of using historical data only is you don't add any elements that bring in the broader data set. So things like aircraft movements into the US and imports uh, on container ships, seasonality, capacity, how many trucks are in the market, right. that stuff is important. And that's the value of bringing all this data together. We have 220 trucking fleets that feed in their data, their GL and, and uh, ledger data, right. plus all of the market data on the tenders. It's awesome, <laughs> I'm so excited. Our forecasting tool has 230 companies using it today. Really, really great progress. I'm really excited. I've been getting fantastic feedback. Now, the other thing we added, which is another element of forecasting, is our fuel forecasting oh, yeah. for rack prices. 90% <laughs> accuracy can save a fleet anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 per truck per year. There's, they don't have to do anything. They don't have to change where <laughs> they spend. They only have to change what day they, they buy. buy fuel. So. Do they fuel up tonight or do they fuel up in the morning? It's 3% savings, it's significant. Yeah, fuel costs are what, roughly four to 10% of the overall uh, revenue? Well, it's four to 10% of, it, it, that is net of fuel surcharge. Right, correct. Keep that in mind. Right. So if you, if you think about it from a fully loaded basis, on average trucks are spending anywhere from 30 to $45,000 per year per truck. Right, for instance, they're spending about 45 cents per gallon or per mile right now, mm -hmm. whereas they're, they're passing off the cost of about 30 cents per mile. Correct, yeah. but you're still buying fuel. And the yeah. great thing about forecasting overnight rack prices is this is the first ever rack wholesale forecast based on historical data. And what we've done is we've, we've gone out and measured how the WTI contract right. uh, and the futures contracts on the NYMEX or the CME, how they interact with the wholesale distributors. This gives the timing element a really important factor. I'm really excited about it. But let's talk about what's new this weekend. <laughs> what's new in Sonar this week? So we've added this Hall EX100, uh, which is really fascinating because it excludes all the local freight movements. These don't necessarily impact capacity. You know, you're, you're moving 100 miles down the road, you can get back in a single day. So we've added some uh, granularities that let us know like, well, reefer, van, because they're two totally different modes of uh, transportation. We now have that in there for that. We also have the weekly, yearly, monthly changes and all that kind of stuff, as well as now we've added all of our rail data now has all the deltas as we call them, yeah. which is the year over year change, because as we all know, it's all seasonal. So we really want to know how does this compare to last year? Exactly. Yes. And it's mm -hmm. and again it's going back to 
if you're only using historical data mm -hmm. to draw your models for forecasting, right. you're not getting a complete view of what happened. Exactly, and we've also divided up our rail data into loaded and empty. Uh, so that everybody can see what's being actively used because that's two totally different functions. Exactly. I mean, the empty mm -hmm. is a shift of containers or boxcars or trailers, frankly, yes. to shift into other markets because that flow and the, these these rail lanes are mm -hmm. very imbalanced. I mean, far more than trucking. Way more imbalanced. It's all uh, one directional. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially when you get into the, the bulk cars. I mean, right. coal is going from a coal plant. Wyoming. Or a coal mine <laughs> yeah. to, a, coal, to, a, to a, uh, a utility. Exactly. To a power plant, and therefore, it's not going back. I mean, right. It goes back empty. And so. we actually noticed something interesting this year with all the empty rail car movements going into the Northeast, signaling where the demand was starting to happen. Yeah. So. It's, uh, it's pretty dramatic. I mean, really <laughs> awesome data on the real yeah. data. What we else we got? Uh, let's see what else we've got. Well, we had well we added the uh, the changes to all our local uh, short haul length of haul volumes essentially. So now you can go in and say uh, week over week, day over day, or year over year, month over month. See what the changes in our length of haul volumes are in individual markets. All the granularities that length we. Length of haul is really important. You think about the fact that it's more extremely freight important. is moving to that local or short haul because of the way that warehouses and distribution centers are popping up in more local communities. And this, this trade war has pushed all this freight to the East Coast where you have shorter length of hauls. Yeah, for sure. And that's mm -hmm. having a dramatic impact on these long haul lanes. It's actually been a drag on intermodal uh, volume yeah. as well. Because intermodal of that reason. cannot compete in that space. Yeah. So, so. We'll, we'll see how that impacts it. Anything mm -hmm. else? Uh, that does it for this week. Uh, we've moved the rate, we've, we've changed some functionality in the platform itself. We've moved the rate predictor up to the forefront of it's the Sonar apps, platform. The it's in the section new section that we introduced section. last week. So you don't have to go into the map and dig around and try to find it. Now it's just right up there up top on the left. It's very, very at the top. It's mm -hmm. awesome and awesome real estate. And we've got a lot of apps coming out. I, I cannot wait until May when we do <laughs> Sonar 6.0. We've got some really awesome features coming. Be sure that you get your tickets to Freightways Live in Atlanta on uh, in early May. It's at the GICC Center, which is the uh, Georgia International Convention Center, uh, right next to Hartsfield International Airport. Get your tickets today. They do go up after today. midnight, so get them today. We'll see you there.